Hey, what's up, folks? It's been a while. Sorry about that. But you know, things? It is redistricting time in the United States of America. If you're not from the U.S., every 10 years we have a census, and based on the results of the census, we screw around with our political boundaries to make them more, and I quote, fair. That's the ideal. In practice, the fair part is not really high up on the list of things that happen during redistricting, but it's a thing we do. And this go around for the 2020 census, I don't have to do anything. Our local government has hired a consultant to handle all this. They're extremely good. They do a lot of redistricting work. They have lawyers that specialize in this and they have demographers and it's great for two reasons. One, I've already had all of the fun I am going to have redistricting. So I've already, I, I've already, I've already run the circus. Uh, there's not a lot to appeal to me there. And two, redistricting often involves rubbing elbows and other body parts of politicians, and that is not my kink. I do not, uh, that is not something I enjoy. So, all that's great. But, I thought I would take a crack at just building the basics of a, of a redistricting, online redistricting application just in case we need it, because with the folks involved, if they decide they need it, they will decide they need it an hour before they need it. And also because it might be kind of fun. Get to see how I build something like this in 2020. You would get to see how I build something like this in 2020. And maybe a lot of you are redistricting right now, and maybe this will help you out. So let's get started. I'm going to do this in a series of videos. I don't know how many. I'm going to try to keep from just rambling from like, for 30, 40 minutes at a time. I'm gonna to try to just keep it in a few steps. So that way, uh, it's just better for everyone. So in this one, I'm gonna basically talk about how I start a project, how I think about a project like this, kind of how it's going to look. We're gonna make the kind of wireframe for it and then set up a development environment so we can get started on it. Now the first thing I do for any kind of application is I don't do any code. What I do is I write and I draw. Now, I write about what I think the application is going to be, and then I'll draw what I think it's going to look like. And there are probably some of you out there that can just hear a problem and start coding and just write poetry. I am not one of those people. If I code first, and write and draw a second, I will be throwing out a lot of the stuff I've, I've coded because I haven't really thought things through. This is helpful for me, maybe it'll be helpful for you. I do not have a template I use. But the first thing I'll do is I'll start writing. I'll start thinking about what data is involved, what kind of storage I'm gonna need, whether it's just for that session or local storage for that user, or whether I need to store something in a backend database. I'll think about what the visual aspects of it are, like if I need a map and some charts and some other things. Think about what kind of controls I need, what kind of business rules are involved. Uh, events is a big thing for web apps. Events really run the show. So the big events for something like this is when you assign one of your geographic units to a new district. And the other one, really the only other one for this is I'm gonna hover over a, uh, you know, a voting precinct or whatever your geographic unit is and get some information on it that you'd need while you're drawing your districts. Uh, if you were doing this for realsies, you'd also have another event where someone submits their plan and that would require some security and rigorous thinking. I'll think of what kind of controls and what I'm going to build it in. And I'm going to build this in SvelteKit because I haven't built anything with SvelteKit before. And it, everybody that I've heard that's been talking about it just rave about it. So we will find out. But the first thing I do is write. The second thing I do is draw. Uh, just do something in Krita real quick. Now I normally draw on just just pencil and paper that's how i normally draw this out but i don't want to have to set up a webcam and point it at my desk or anything so this drawing will be really ugly 
see, but we're going to have a title up top. And then we're going to have our main content area. And this is going to be divided into two sections. We're going to have a map. Uh, my, my little drawing tablet is dragging stuff around. We're going to have a chart. Maybe another chart. Then maybe some checks that we're going to run to see whether you did good things or you sucked with your districts. We're going to have some controls. Uh, get up there. We have some controls maybe up at the top where you can like radio buttons, but it may express as a button bar. Like this is six. So if I make this active, when I click on a district on the map, it'll turn it into district six and rerun all these charts and checks. And then at the bottom, you'll probably have a footer. And that's a foot. So this is what I'm thinking about for a layout for this. And uh, if you're wondering how can uh, you get a copy of this kind of just brilliant artwork, the answer is you can't and you're welcome for that. Do we want to save this? No, I don't think so. I don't think we ever want to see that again. That will live in our nightmares. Okay, so the next thing I'll do once I have some writing and some drawing done is I'll make a wireframe of the layout. It's basically making a bunch of boxes or divs where stuff is going to go. So for that, I'm going to use Tailwind because that's just a thing I use for CSS. Oh good, I already made it made it big here. So now we got nothing. That's no good. First I'll just make just divs. We'll need a container div. From there we'll need a we'll need say a title and then we'll need another container for our main content area and that will have a div for the map and then we'll want another container area for our sidebar not sidebar but you know that stuff on the side I guess you'd call that a sidebar and on that we would have divs for like uh, uh, our charts and say that uh, uh, those check boxes not real not really check boxes uh, check indicators now that it matters at this point that's we have that and then down below that we would have say our our footer so that's good ready to go can we ship it no 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 Oop, that's not what I want to do big okay well now we're gonna put in some tailwind and hopefully I won't need to google any tailwind stuff while I'm doing this we want a container and that just makes it like yeah you know, when you maximize because we, uh, we GIS people have these big old monitors we maximize the web page it doesn't make the text go all the way across the screen that's like a container so things don't get out of hand and we'll go MX auto to put it automatically center the white space on either size and the container in Tailwind is responsive so it'll It'll adjust itself based on your screen size. And then let's get it off the top and bottom of the page. That looks good. Title's fine. I mean, we can screw with it here if we want. We can just go text, uh, let's see, text center, text for Excel. Ooh, it's big. 3XL and we'll go font bold. Neat. And for our map, 
For this container in the middle that has our map and our other stuff, we'll want to make that a CSS grid. And with a grid, there's, there's a lot of different ways to lay out a grid. I like to give it a certain number of columns, and then I can make things done by columns rather than specific sizes. So we can go, uh, say, grid calls. We'll make four and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that map go for four of them we'll go class uh, let's see we'll go calls band oh not for four we'll go for three of them so three out of the four uh, did it did I do a typo oh it's call not call span three so now we've got a four wide grid with the map taking up three of them. And let's give it a little, I'll tell you what, let's uh, give it a little gap. Okay, gap three. And what that'll do, you can't really see it right now, we go give it a little bit of color. And then we'll do the same thing for this guy. You see there's there's a gap there, a little space. So we'll want to give that'll give space around that and that, but we want some Y space there. So I'm gonna go class equals for that container uh, gap Y in the same amount three. So now those things will be spaced out by three. We have to I have to make it a grid to do that. Yep, we did. Grid, gap Y3. So now we got that. Those are spaced out. I tell you what, let's, uh, yeah, it's fine for now. Now this is not responsive. So if we go like this, things get uh, cramped. Let's make this responsive. And it's really easy to do that with grid. Grid and tailwind. So grid does things uh, small to big. So you want to set your default styles for what you want on your smallest screens and then change it as it grows. So if we go grid calls one, because what I want to do is have this stuff wrapped to one column when it's small. And then I can change this for medium size and above to uh, grid columns four. So now when we scrunch, see it's going to change it to three columns around 768. Now this map is sticking out a little bit further, and that's because we gave it this call span three when we're giving the whole grid a call span of one. So we want to change that to medium call span of three. And that might be all we need to do. Yep, that's all I need to do because call span one is the default. Matter of fact, I might be able to take that off there too. Just have it specify medium. Oh, look at that. Succinct. Are we okay with that? It's more succinct, but it's less clear what's going on. Eh, I think it's fine. So that is our basic layout. That's how we're going to have everything done. It's already responsive. We probably want to give it a little bit of... Give the whole container a little bit of margin on small screens. So... We're padding. Eh, let's not worry about that right now. We can always fix that later. That is our basic wireframe layout. Now we're ready to lay out our project and we'll use this code for our project. So I'm going to pull up a command prompt. Make this a little bigger for you. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go to where I put all my stuff. And we're going to start a new SvelteKit project. NPM init, uh, svelte at next. This at next you need because it's it's kind of still in beta right now. We'll give it a name, redistrict 
2020. I think that's it. It's going to ask me if I want a demo project or a skeleton project. We'll just take a skeleton project so we're not having to delete stuff. TypeScript can suck it. ESLint can suck it. Prettier can suck it. All right. Let's go into that folder. Uh, District 2020 npm install to get our our stuff installed so now we have a project there's a couple other things i'm gonna want and one is i want tailwind that's very easy to add npx for npm execute uh, svelte add svelte add is a thing you can use stuff to add to either uh, vite or svelte kit Spelt add, and I think it's just tailwind CSS. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And I think we have to install that. I don't think it actually installed it in NPM. I think it just show what this looks like now. It did make our tailwind config. I wish you could just go npm install to install that. And we should have all our npms. Are all, all our tailwind stuff that we need. Uh, more. So yeah, it added post CSS and tailwind and all of that stuff. Now there's one other thing we need to add to really have this wire framed out or, or have our development environment set up. And by default, SvelteKit does server-side rendering, and we don't want that. We don't want to have to set up a node server to run this. We just want uh, static builds. So we'll go npm install save dev and at SvelteKit slash adapter static. I did write this one down because, as you can see, it's kind of heinous. Ooh, I got a pound sign in there. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's just open up VS Code here. And see how the project... Uh, you can't read that. Control plus plus plus. So we've got static assets, which right now is just a favicon. We got our source, which includes our app and our routes, and it just has one route for index. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Package.json says we can run dev, so we can go npm run dev, and I think it's dash 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 open. And Oh, you can probably barely see that, but it says, Welcome to Spellkick, we haven't put in our wireframe yet. Let's grab this. And we don't need you quite so big now. Grab that and go into our index route, and we'll just replace all that with our wireframe. So when we save that, hopefully... And there's our wireframe all ready to go with our development environment. And if we were ready to build, you just control C out of there and go npm run build. And it should make, oh, no adapter specified. Ah, we forgot to add the uh, code we need to get our static adapter working. Let's do that. I had that up here. And here's our static adapter that we added. We have to go into our spelt config. And where it says kit, we want to add in this adapter we just made or just installed. I imagine when you do the, uh, the like demo starter site it already has this in there an adapter installed for you 
But now we do that and we run npm run build. Yeah, it made this build folder. It's got everything set to run static. So if we did go to start a local Python server in that folder, and I have my Python server just set up to run at port 3000. You see our, our site's just working fine. So we've gone from an idea to some writing, to some drawing, to some wireframing, to setting up a development environment and all of our stuff. So we've got Svelte and Tailwind and a development server and a build process already built. Next time, we are going to drop in some real stuff. We'll drop in a map, and that'll require getting some geography ready. I'll, I won't show you doing that because no one wants to see me fumble around with that. But I'll just tell you what I'm thinking this kind of project will need. We'll get the map working with the hover event, and we'll get a control bar to click and change the districts of things. Then maybe the time after that, we'll make some charts and checks and stuff. But we'll see how it goes. I hope you found that useful. I hope everybody is staying safe and well and happy. I will catch you later. Bye-bye.